In this lesson, we'll look at an example of a situation where reversing the vertex order won't be effective in reversing normal direction for us, and instead we'll need to actually invert the values of the normal vector. So I'll drop down a grid node, and I'll make this the size of just one meter by one meter, and I'll give it just two rows and two columns of points. And I've got this same cone here that we used in the last section, and let's say that I want to copy this cone onto these points of this grid, and I want them to face out at 45 degrees away from each edge of this grid. So I'll drop down a copy to points node, and I'll wire the tube into this first input, and the grid into the second input. And when I set the display flag on a copy to points node, we see that the cones are all pointing straight up along the Y axis. And this is because Houdini is automatically computing the normals of the points on this grid by averaging the normal of the primitives that they're attached to. The points are only attached to this single primitive, and so the normal of every point is in exactly the same direction as the primitive normal. So this isn't giving me what I want. None of the options on the normal node are going to help in this scenario because they all use methods of averaging primitive normals around a point to determine point direction. So I'm going to use a different method of computing the point normal, and for that I'm going to use a polyframe node. So I'll drop down a polyframe after the grid. Now we're going to be covering the polyframe node in detail in a later course in this series, and so we're only going to be scratching the surface in this lesson. The idea for now is really just to see an example of the kind of scenario when we'd reverse a normal vector rather than reverse the vertex order. We can see from the normal markers that this polyframe node is still computing the point normals to be pointing straight up in the y-axis, because in this normal option here it still uses this same method of averaging the primitive normal around each point to compute the point normal. But we can see that we're also computing another vector here for the tangent. Houdini gives us a default attribute name of tangent u, because we're calculating the tangent of the curve in the u dimension. If I bring up the node info and click on this tangent u attribute, that creates a vector marker for this attribute, and we can see that those markers are all pointing in towards the center of this primitive. We did look at tangents briefly in the Core Essentials course, when we were looking at the orient on snap option of the multi-snap tool. And if you remember, the tangent of an edge is the direction that an edge is traveling. So let's just take a moment to look at calculating the tangent of a point based on a single edge. If I change this style parameter in the polyframe node to first edge, then we're computing the tangent of each point using only one of the two edges attached to it. The way that this first edge style works is that it computes the tangent of the edge which appears first in the polygon winding order. If we look at the vertex numbers being displayed in the viewport, we can see that this polygon's winding this way in a clockwise direction. And so for this point here where vertex number one's attached, this edge on this side of the point appears before this edge on this side of the point when we follow the direction of the winding order. And so the tangent of this point is the direction of this first edge. If I change the style to two edges, then we now compute the tangent of the point based on the direction of the two edges which are connected to it. If we add together the direction vector of this edge from this point and this edge from this point, then we get this direction vector halfway between the two. And we can see that this tangent vector is much closer to what we need for orientating the cones in this outward direction, away from the edges of this grid. All we need to do is to copy the values of this tangent u attribute into the normal attribute, and reverse the direction of this vector. And so what we can do is in the parameters of this polyframe node, we can turn off this normal computation. And for this tangent vector, we can say rather than store this vector in a new attribute called tangent u, Instead, store this vector in the normal attribute, and to do that, we can simply replace the attribute name with a capital N. Now we see the point normal markers are now pointing towards the center of the primitive, and if I set the display flag on the copy to points node, we can see that the cones are now pointing in that same direction. So now we just need to reverse this normal vector, and if we try and do this with a reverse node, We see that this doesn't reverse these point normals for us in this case, and this is because we've already computed and stored that normal attribute on the points. The reverse node's affecting the primitive normal, but it's not going to affect attribute values stored on points. Reversing the vertex order is only going to affect new normal computations that we make based on the primitive normal. So if I drop down a normal node after this reverse node, 
and choose to add normals to the points, we see that we compute those point normals based on the primitive direction. And in this case, the reverse node is influencing which direction those normals are computed to. But I don't want to recompute these normals, so I'll just toggle off this compute normal option. What we want to do is to take those attribute values, which we've already computed and stored on the points, and modify them by reversing them, which I'll do by enabling this reverse normal option here. And now we see that those normal vectors are facing in the opposite direction. When I set the display flag on the copy to points node, we see that the cones have been transformed so that the Z axis is aligned with this normal. So over these last two lessons, we've seen examples of when we need to reverse the vertex order and when we just need to reverse the normal vector. For surface shading, we need to reverse the vertex order to reverse the primitive direction. But when we're working with normals for orientating copy geometry, then reversing the normal vector using either this reverse option on the normal node or by multiplying the normal vector by minus one is going to give us the results we need.